With proper tools, assembling these heads can be very easy. Without them, it can be a nightmare. The heads design, design of these heads is no different than Formula One and IndyCar cylinder heads. Both call for close tolerance and leave little or no room for air. We're starting with a GM 1.8 cylinder head. It's bolted down to a head fixture or head assembly bench. If you note, all stems need to be lubed, and all valve stems should be polished. A lot of times you can't feel the necks, but when you start sl sliding them in, they're there. Now if you notice there, he lubed all the valves, and he's lo rotating them to the symbols or any forging marks. It just cosmetically, but it looks good. When you buy a racing head, or a new head from the factories, you look at them and they're all assembled in one direction, which doesn't make any difference in the performance, but it makes the customer think, well, geez, if this works good here, it's going to be good on everything else. Now there he used closed cell foam and pin to hold the valves in place. The lower re retainers are being dropped on. Now back and lubing those stems again. You know, that's mainly for shelf life. If they don't get installed right away, they do have lots of lubricant on them. Now he's putting the seals on. Now an oversized valve guide works real good on that particular type of seal and you can push it down with your hand without crushing it and you feel it clip on. Now the springs and the retainers are being put in place. And if you notice he's putting the keepers on top of the retainers. Now valves call for a straight, these valves today are very narrow in the stems and any amount of side load or pressure will bend them very easily. If you notice there he just pushes it down and just kind of wiggles it back and forth and lets the keepers fall into place. He's going to go down it with a vacuum test before he takes the head off and he's going to check it for valve seat. And if it doesn't seal, there's the place to fix it. And the other thing is on those GMs, it's real critical on the valve stem length. Especially if the head was warped and in the welding process and it was surfaced, it needs to be squared on the top as well. If it isn't, when you put it together, you may have lose your backlash in the hydraulic lifters. Now we're going to a 2.2 Chrysler. Here he's bolting it down to the head assembler. Now 
Now this is a real popular one. You, you will see a lot of these models and there'll be a lot more to come. Now we're back and we'll be lubing the stems again. Now we're using closed cell foam to hold the valves in place. And there's that lube again. Now these are easier seals going on. But they still need that lube on the seals. And there's the lower retainer. There's the upper retainer with the with the keepers. Now we're pulling out the foam pads. Now that particular one, it's got the double keepers and it's a good habit to go down with a plastic mallet and just to tap them to make sure they're seated in. And now doing the vacuum test to see if the valves are seated. Now this particular model, what we're doing now, we're putting the lifters in, putting the lifters in, and those bores need to be lubed as well. And now we put the cam in while it's up on the fixture. Now lubing all the mains and all the lobes. Now on those lobes, if you're not putting in a fresh ground cam, you need to you need to look at it to make sure the top is if they're worn, they should be polished off square. And the followers should be squared off too. Because if they're not, shortly down the road, they'll ride on the high spot and you'll lose your lost your adjustment. Now he's twerking down the torquing down the caps. Now when you got the caps all torqued down, then you need to visually spin the cam and see, make sure it is free. You know, and it's got to be within factory tolerance. It can't be too loose and it, and it can't be locked up. Although the cold weather makes them tight ones lock up and it brings us all a lot of business. But you really don't want yours to lock up. Now is what we did, we turned around, we're pushing right next to the keepers and compressing the spring and bringing in the followers from the back direction.
Now we're gonna, we finished that one, now we're into the, this is the Ford, the Lincoln motor with the roller overhead cam. And basically all the rest of it's the same, but you're just showing how you can do the same thing to bring those rollers in. The rollers are hooked onto the followers on that particular model. Now we're on to a four valve, uh, four valve ti twin Toyota. That's what we're doing here. We're change, turning the lobe up on top center and putting a piece of cardboard. And we all got the little boxes with the seats come in. Just fold up those. Well, now we can spin it over and for doing correction on the puck, changing them without pulling the cam. You put the cardboard, spin them over backwards, and then come in and pop it out with a little magnet. You can change the pucks. rather than have to pull the whole cam out. <coughs> now we got a 2.6 Mitsubishi. Basically just showing adjusting the jet valve. You can do, it's put together just like all the rest of them. Now is what we're doing on the hydraulic lifter, going down and check every one. Most of them got somewhere between 40 to 80,000, depending on you know what the tolerance was and what the geometry is in the rocker arm. But you need to make sure that they're all free. Here we've made a production plate, which actually it's, it's rubber lined and the head stands up on the exhaust side you install the valves. Looking through the ports, you can actually see to line them up. Install all the valves, and then there'll be a little foam pad, a magnet foam pad, what holds the valves in place. Flip it down, and then we install the springs with the keepers and the retainer. We Now we just put the plunger on top and then we just wiggle them back and forth with your fingers on top of the keepers. It's foot operated, you just push down and the keepers will fall into place. And after installing the keepers, and then we run the vacuum check down. If you notice here, we run the vacuum up and then we let it hold for a few seconds. It's got a check valve, and so actually it holds the vacuum. You're not always running under a vacuum condition. You run it up to maximum vacuum, and then you wait for a second, and then you, you have to release the pressure to go to the next one. But it's a true vacuum check through the ports. Now in some of the Chevys, you have to put the pad in the back on the crossover. But you can put, a, put together a small block in three to four minutes. Now here's our valve stem polisher. It's foot operated, the trigger's on a switch. And if you notice in the back, it's got a roller, which like a torsion bar. So you can't push the belt down. You've got it set to where it's about a sixteenth of an inch above the valve. Well, that way, nobody's gonna wear a flat spot. Now, all you wanna do is just buff them off across where the keeper's going if there's any nicks. 
Here we have our camshaft polisher, or camshaft lap. If you notice here that contact wheel is rubber. It doesn't change the profile, it just squares off the top. And it takes any rust or anything off, but it does square the top. Doesn't change the profile. About four laps across, three to four laps. And this is a variable speed. Oh, here we are. We're doing the followers. You just want to go through and square off the wear pattern and deburr the edges. You know, it's just all hand profile. Uh, spindle speed is zero to uh, 150 RPM.